what I have here is a uh, movement, it's a clock movement from around about 1850, something like that. It's probably English. The date, the dead giveaway for the dates are these little pins here. If you see a clock that's pinned together like that and not screwed, it's usually around about the mid-1800s and earlier than that to make it that sort of uh, uh, vintage. This particular movement doesn't have a strike train. It's only got the one time train in here. And that's probably for something English. I'm thinking probably a government department or something like that. Um, but it's designed to keep uh, reasonably perfect time. This particular movement is called a fusee movement. If I look around here, you'll see here this funny looking contraption here that has a the spring is housed in this drum here and off that drum as you wind the thing up a chain is wrapped around like a bike chain is wrapped around the drum there and it goes down to this particular cone shape uh, uh, like a pulley arrangement down here now as you uh, when you wind a clock up that doesn't have a fusee movement in it it um, Basically, it will run slightly too fast when you start up because the spring, the, uh, the spring will be tight, forcing the clock to run a little bit faster. And as the spring um, runs down, it will run a little bit slow. And over the seven days or so that it's running, it will average out to basically the correct time at the end of the week. A little bit fast at the start of the week, a little bit too slow at the end, so it works out about the same. But this clock is what they call regulated with what they call a fusee movement. And what happens is as you wind this up, this drum here unwinds down to the middle of this cone here. And of course, the mechanical advantage is a lot less. And as the spring runs down, it runs up this, up this cone here to the outside here. And therefore, the clock will, um, the mechanical advantage is a lot higher with a less of a spring there. So the output into the clock is uniform throughout the week. It's a way of regulating the clock movement uh, so that it keeps constant time. So you'd probably see it in England in a train station or something like that because the poems were much better at keeping time than the Australians ever were. So that's what we call a fusee movement. Sometimes you see a double fusee movement, which is two of those in the one clock there, one for the strike train, one for the time train. And sometimes you see a triple fusee movement, very expensive clocks, and you see it for the chimes on the quarter hour. So if ever you open up a clock and you see... Uh, three of these movements in here inside there uh, doing all the work there it's probably a very very expensive clock this one here is just time only so you can kind of imagine it in some sort of public building in the UK back in the 1850s or something like that doesn't have a case doesn't have anything much at all at the moment because I'm going to get a case for it and mount it up in the case there and uh, hopefully I'll have a nice uh, reliable very old movement clock with a with a new case